All right, who runs the world? Well, for more than an hour yesterday, acting president Kamala Harris did. That was while President Biden was under anesthesia for a routine colonoscopy. It was a brief but history-making moment and underscores the vital role of the vice president despite recent inside the Beltway media reports of dysfunction and disarray and speculation that she is feeling underutilized, something Harris wholeheartedly denied this week. You don't feel misused or underused? No, I don't. I am very, very excited about the work that we have accomplished, but I am also absolutely, absolutely clear-eyed that there is a lot more to do and we're going to get it done. Joining me now, Aaron Haynes, editor at large for the 19th and MSNBC contributor, and Angela Rye, politics and culture commentator and host of On One with Angela Rye. Both these ladies looking stunning this morning. Um, Aaron, I want to start with you because you just heard the vice president say that she doesn't feel underutilized. Let's just take a look at what's in her portfolio uh, as people say she might be feeling underused. Um, she is handling the uh, migration humanitarian crisis, voting rights. That alone uh, could be a full-time job filibuster reform, uh, the climate change policy, increased union um, membership, uh, supply chain crisis, um, internet access, the digital divide. She's had several um, successful foreign policy trips uh, from France to her first uh, record trip in uh, Asia. So what do you make of people suggesting um, that she feels underutilized? She's saying she doesn't. What's your take? Well, I think that her take is, I mean, my take is that she is not doing a great enough job of telling her own story. I mean, yes, there's absolutely been some questionable, questionable coverage, but at the end of the day, even game changers have to play the game, right? I mean, history literally was being made in front of our eyes yesterday. As you pointed out, Tiffany, Vice President Harris was acting president for 85 minutes. And yes, the vice president has done that before in our country, but that person has never been a woman. That was a missed opportunity. Yes, I saw some coverage, but by and large, you didn't really see that happening, being discussed, or, or, or the, the history and importance of that uh, being discussed uh, in the cable news cycle yesterday. Vice President Harris is a first. She is breaking tradition in this traditional role, and she has a responsibility to really normalize her leadership for the press and for the country. That's not something that's just going to happen in the pages of Vogue or on Instagram and Twitter. Her public schedule goes out every day. I certainly see that she's doing plenty. But how is her office, how is she actually communicating how she is governing? Messaging matters. We know that she has this portfolio. And as vice president, she's been focused on many of the things that come with the job, like proving that she can be this trusted partner that Joe Biden promised that she would be when he picked her. But this job, particularly for her, is also about saleswomanship. And this was a challenge for her, frankly, uh, when I covered her as a presidential candidate, introducing herself to the press and to voters. That's not something she's necessarily comfortable with. Uh, and, and coming from California, you know, maybe she was more used to campaigning on television than the kind of hands-on approach that's required at this level. But like Joe Biden was a master, is a master of retail politics. And that's just something that Vice President Harris is going to have to get better at, because if she doesn't, others are going to continue to define her and tell her story for her. Yeah, so Aaron, I, I take your point on some of that, but Angela, I have to say, I think this is a combination of a few things, right? Because the Beltway Press, um, you know, it, it is not as diverse uh, as it could or should be, and the Beltway Press frequently talks to each other, about each other, and for each other. Rarely are they talking to people outside the Beltway, uh, punctuating issues. And then there's the issue of her staff, right? Because Vice President Kamala Harris is dealing with all these issues. Should she be the sole person putting together her comms operation, right? Our mutual friend Ashley Etienne uh, just departed the White House. She was always supposed to leave. She said she was going to leave after uh, a year anyway, so this isn't necessarily connected to everything else happening. Um, but what's your take on, on her role? Because you and I have seen her places. She just spoke at Reverend Sharpen's 30th anniversary of National Action Network. She's been out there. Yeah, and, and yet, Tiffany, I don't think she's been out there enough. As Aaron just said, Joe Biden is a master at retail politics, but the only problem is so many of people, the, of the people who look like us aren't buying what he's selling, right? And so what should happen is that there should be um, 
some instruction taken by the folks who showed up at the polls. There are a number of people who voted for this ticket, yes, because it was certainly better than the alternative, and I don't want to minimize that. But there were also a number of people who were excited about the historic nature of his vice presidential pick. And there were numerous promises made to her. And as a result of the numerous promises made to her, a number of promises made to the American public. When Kamala Harris was chosen to take on voting rights reform, partially because of her choosing, we expected her to show up and be loud and bold and clear about the direction of, of what's happening with our voting rights in this country. Yet, state after state is decimating our access to the ballot box. That's, that's no winning recipe for 2022, and it certainly isn't one for 2024. So whatever we want to say about retail politics, we have a democracy that's in crisis. And what, what we can't afford is to have a, a vice president who appears to be sidelined. I know that Kamala laughed that off in the interview, but the reality of it is, Tiffany and Aaron, there are a number of people who talk about this all the time. She has not been visible enough. We need to see her more. We need to see the strategy, the strategic mind that she has working. We saw that working in the Senate. We know the George Floyd Justice and Policing Bill was her bill. These are the kinds of things that need to be moving in addition to the infrastructure package, in addition to build back better. And I still don't, for the life of me, understand what that means. All of that said, Ashley's departure is um, a devastating blow um, to the administration and certainly to Kamala Harris's office. What's even more devastating, as from my perspective, is that Ashley um, was never really relied upon in ways that she could have been and should have been. This is someone who helped to author H.R. 1, right? under the hands of members of Congress. This is someone who is uh, a masterful communicator and certainly could have been a greater benefit to the vice president's office. I hope and I pray that whatever is happening internally, and I don't just think it's in the vice president's office, I also think that there's some issue and conflict from the president's side as well. It has to get resolved because what we can't afford is to have an invisible woman when she's that powerful, that incredible, and that brilliant. It's time for her to be used a lot more. Yeah, and let me say, I, I spoke with Ashley uh, yesterday, and she has said that she will continue to be helpful to the vice president, even though she has uh, departed her position. But I echo all of your thoughts. Um, we are way over time, but I just want to point out that it is something striking um, that black women largely put Joe Biden in office. Uh, we credit black women with that, um, and that his deputy, his vice president, um, is a black woman and could be the heir apparent to this office. Um, so it will be really interesting to see what the backbone of the Democratic Party does in 2024. You ladies will have to uh, not make plans on Saturday mornings because I imagine that we'll have this conversation many, many more times. We should pick it up on IG Live after the show because my control room is telling me we got to go to a commercial break. So thank you so much, Aaron Haynes and Angela Rye uh, for joining me this morning and coming